Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome to the Seekers of Treasure. The Promised Messiah والسلام, said that he has come to create a new heaven, a new earth. And thus this new heaven, this new earth was his community of righteous, God-fearing people who had a true connection with God Almighty. The Promised Messiah والسلام, also said that he used to often ponder over the question of whether or not he has created this God-fearing community. And thus this intense passion, this intense desire caused him to write an abundance of treasure for us all. The Rohani Khazain, his blessed writings from which we can attain all kinds of advancements. Now today is a very special program indeed. It's the very finals of Seekers of Treasure. It's been a very tough competition and an epic journey, I must say. But at the end, through two very hard, I must say, semi-finals, Islamabad seekers and seekers from Masrur region have made it through to the end. On my right hand side we have Daniel who is studying right now, Tarsav who is a lecturer in the University of Guildford and Atif Rashid at the end who is studying journalism right now. Assalamu alaikum to you all. Wa Atif you reached the finals, how do you feel? Um, well I think I need someone to pinch me because I can't believe we're here um, <laughs> but Alhamdulillah we made it this far and so we'll see how it goes from here, inshallah. Well, the best of luck. On my left-hand side, we have Musru region. We have Raza Saab, who is in IT. We have the mathematician of the show, Ghalib Saab. And right at the end, Jamal Saab is also working in IT. Jamal Saab, mashallah, you've reached the finals. How do you feel? Again, similar to Atif Saab, we didn't really contemplate we'd get this far. So mashallah, it's all down to everyone's prayers and support. So we're very happy to be here. Well, whoever does win, everyone's going to be a winner today overall, inshallah, as well. Seekers, we're going to go into the first round. Same rules apply. First team to reach their base first. Islamabad, you are green. And Masur region, you are blue. Seekers ready, hands on the buzzers. Thinking that all righteous people can become the Imam is incorrect. What Quranic verse? Okay, Ghalib Saab there with the buzz. Um, so it's the end of Surah Al Furqan. Um, do you need the Arabic? The Arabic. Uh, so it's the makers, the leaders of the righteous, which is uh, 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 Yeah, uh, so I, could I, could I, could I just recite the whole verse and then yes. you can... Okay, so it's... Uh, <laughs> it is the correct answer. Well then, got there in the end. Five marks for you. Where would you like to go? To the right place. To the right it is. Okay, seekers ready. In the founding of Christianity, the Promised Messiah والسلام, states that Jesus likened himself to Prophet Jonah, who stayed in the belly of the fish for three days but did not die. In the same manner, Jesus والسلام, remained unconscious after being taken off the cross for three days and nights but never died. After this, the Promised Messiah والسلام, wrote the Persian couplet. Okay, Atar Sahib. This, this much should be enough if anyone is listening. It's the correct answer. I was actually going to ask the translation of the Persian couplet and you actually got that. Well done for that. It's five marks to you as well. Where would you like to go? Towards the left. To the left it is. Okay, seekers ready. The Promised Messiah Islam, writes the following Urdu couplet, which is Jeete ji qadr bashar ki nahi hoti. Again, Atar Sahib. Jeete ji qadr bashar ki nahi hoti. Tumhe yaad aayenge tumhe mere sukhan mere baad. And the English translation is um, as long as one is alive, people do not uh, realize its importance and you will remember my admonishments once I am no more. And okay. this couplet is found uh, uh, in the book. Victory of Islam. It's the correct answer. Well done for that. Mashallah, very good. Okay, Seekers, it's 10-5 to Islamabad. Where would you like to go, Atasa? Obviously to the left. Okay, to the left it is. Seekers ready. The Promised Messiah had a huge task of taking care of the necessities of the guests who used to visit him to inquire about Islam. In fact, the Promised Messiah said that these guests may have numbered over 60,000 and we have a buzz from Masrur region. I was surprisingly going to say 60,000 is my answer, but you sort of said that. So I'm going to say uh, 300, 400, oh, up to 1,000 in a month. It's the incorrect answer. I will complete the question and give this to Islamabad. In fact, the Promised Messiah والسلام, said that these guests may have numbered over 60,000. This happened in the period of how many years? Six 
six years. Right? Six years. Is incorrect. The correct answer was actually seven years. Okay, Khalid Sahib, unlucky there with the early buzz there. Okay, it's a no mark question. Okay, seekers ready? When addressing the topic of God and his connection with the soul, the promised Messiah alayhi salatu wasalam, quoted the Quranic verse of Surah Raf, verse 173, which is, Alastu bi rabbikum qalu bala. What does this mean? Ghalib there with the buzz. I am your Lord. And they replied, Yes, indeed. Am I not your Lord? And they replied, Yes, indeed. That is the, in that is the correct answer, rather. Well done for that. Where would you like to go on this? To the right, please. Okay, to the right is. It's 10 all in the final so far. Okay, seekers ready? Following question. How is fana achieved? Ghalib there again. Ah, with the union of man's love is united with the love that descends from Allah. And that flame that descends from heaven then annihilates or does fana of this the soul. That's the correct answer. Well done for that, mashallah. Come down, please. Okay, you like to go down. Yes, that one. Okay. Seekers, ready. It's 1510 to Masrur region. The concept of Trinity was borrowed by Paul to satisfy the Greeks who believed in three gods, just like the Hindus who believed in three idols called what? Okay, is the correct answer. Well done. And either one of the two. Of okay, course. so Masrur region, if you get this, question right you will win this round seekers ready in fountain of Christianity the promised Messiah wasalam, explains that the author of Yunabi ul Islam has tried to explain that the Holy Quran has been copied from various books however he failed to do so the promised Messiah wasalam, associated the author of this book with which religion Ghalib there again Christianity is the incorrect answer. We'll give this over to Islamabad. Will you repeat the question? Yes. So the question is Yes, I can repeat the question. Yes. The Prophet Messiah associated the author of Yunabiul Islam with which religion? Hmm? Judaism. Judaism. Is correct answer. The Prophet Messiah Islam explained just like the Jews exactly. I think yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, of course. Well done. Okay, so seekers from Islam, where would you like to go? Yeah, left towards okay, left. To the left it is. In the victory of Islam, one task the Prophet Messiah Islam, used to carry out was writing replies to letters. The Prophet Messiah Islam, said that over the past seven years, over 90,000 letters were received and responded to. Amazingly, each month, the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam, okay, atasa. Each month, he uh, 300 to 7, 700, and sometimes 1,000 as well, up That's to 1,000. That's answer. Well done for that. Okay, so it's, like, it's a sudden death situation. Whoever gets this correct will win the first round. It's 2020, very tough competition today. In Fountain of Christianity, the promised Messiah explained how Paul, due to his selfish desires, changed and corrupted the Christian faith totally, and thus he first started the false concept of Pauline Trinity in which country? Ghalib there with the buzz. It was in Damascus, which is in Syria. Damascus is correct, well done. Sigh of relief there, Ghalib. Sigh of relief there. Yeah, well, I thought I made a clever move by coming down, but we <laughs> lost all the points that we made. Islamabad <laughs> kind of pulled it back there at the end. It was a sudden death, mashallah. 25-20, the, the scores are still very close indeed. Before we carry on, I'd like to come to Reza Sahib. Reza Sahib, you've reached the final, yes. but over the course of your journey in the Seekers of Treasure, how has your concept of the Prophet Messiah al -Islam, changed? Because before we always heard about the Prophet Messiah, and now you're reading his literature, you're reading his writings, you're reading his sayings as well, and surely your concept, your thoughts of the Prophet Messiah must have changed. Yes, I'm deeply impressed the knowledge that he shared with us, the treasure as the show's name is. So the treasure he left for us to, to gain the knowledge and to read about it is fascinating. It's amazing, and Jamal Sab, you same question, you know, We've always heard from childhood about the Prophet Messiah Now reading his books and getting tested on them as well, so you have to read them in depth. How's it 
change your perception on the Promised Messiah? Well, I think you know, we, uh, you know, during Hazul's khutbahs and uh, other other documentaries, we only really hear snippets of the writings of the Promised Messiah, Islam. But by actually reading um, the books in total, you realise how logical um, the Promised Messiah, Islam has been in explaining his arguments. So that's you know, it, it really increases your knowledge by by reading okay. them. So. Thank you very much. So for the second round, we will go to Masroor and ask them what book they would like to choose. The multiple choice round. Uh, Fountain of Christianity. Okay, Fountain yeah. of Christianity it is. Seekers from Islamabad, seekers from Masroor region, your first question. The Promised Messiah Islam, in Fountain of Christianity explains that many people waste their lives in pursuit of this world and fail to recognize God and establish a relationship with Him. He further states that there are those who, who by accumulating wealth in hope it will bring them true happiness but ultimately they have to leave behind their wealth and have to drink from the cup of death in A. Great pain, B. Great happiness, C. Great regret, D. Great anger. Ghaib there with a buzz. Great regret. You went for C. Great regret. Let's see if that is correct. Well done. That's the correct answer. The Prophet Messiah explained that those who reach the end of their lives, when they see that they haven't accepted the truth, they will die with a, a death with great regret because they will see over that if they had accepted the Imam of the Age, if they had accepted the true religion of God Almighty, they would have followed the right way and in turn reach eternity in the hereafter. Jazakallah for that. Seekers, your next question 3022 Masrur region. The Promised Messiah states that salvation cannot be achieved without the love of God and without union with Him. Had the people of other faiths been aware of this philosophy, they would never have claimed that all souls are eternal, self-existing, and A, blessed with true life, B, blessed with true revelation, C, blessed with true purpose, D, blessed with true eternity. Ghalib there again. D, blessed with true eternity. D, blessed with true eternity. That is the incorrect answer. We'll give this over to Islamabad. You may confer. Okay, we need an answer. B, C, yeah. C. Or B. Okay. C. C, blessed with true purpose, is the incorrect answer. The correct answer was a, blessed with true life. Okay, seekers ready. The promised Messiah, Islam, in Fountain of Christianity states, God says in his book that the inmates of hell will dwell in it for a long time, which has metaphorically been called eternity in view of... Okay, we have a buzz. Human weakness. Let's read out the options. A, human thinking. B, human sin. C, human weakness. D, human error. You said C, human weakness is the correct answer. Well done. And for the viewers at home, Ghalib Sahib, can you just explain what the Promised Messiah is saying here? Okay, so God created man with an innate weakness. Right. And so he bears a portion of the responsibility when they commit wrong. And so it would be completely, though he gave us choice, the fact that we have the choice in the first place is down to him. Yes. And so he bears, not he says figuratively bears some of the blame for our sin. Yes. Essentially, his mercy then encompasses. The Prophet ﷺ has explained categorically that people do sin and as a result of their sin, they will be entered into hell. But God will then manifest his attribute of forbearance and forgiveness. And in the end, like we have explained before, will admit everyone into heaven. Okay, the scores as it stands right now is 35 to the seekers from Masur region and 20 to Islamabad region. Okay, seekers ready. The promised Messiah والسلام, explains that those who are perfect in their love and obedience to God and those who bow themselves before Him with perfect faith and certainty are granted a perfect life which is A, exclusive, B, original, C, like the angels, D, magical. Okay, we have a buzz from Atif. Um, a, exclusive. Okay, let's see if that's the correct answer. A exclusive is the correct answer. The Prophet Messiah has explained 
that those who are blessed by God, their actual their physical being changes as well and they're given all their senses are sharpened as well. Well done for that. 35.25, seekers ready, hands on the buzzers. In the fountain of Christianity, the promised Messiah states that as for the oneness of God, the Arya Samaj believe all souls and particles to be partners with their Parmeshwar by virtue of their A, self-awareness, B, self-existence. Ghalib there with the buzz. B, self-existence. Okay, C was self-determination and D is self-analysis and you said B, self-existence is the correct answer, well done. Seekers, ready, the next question. In Fountain of Christianity, the Promised Messiah والسلام, stated that God Almighty revealed to him on four different occasions that Punjab would experience a terrible earthquake. Accordingly, earthquakes occurred in 1905 and 1906. Regarding these signs, the Promised Messiah والسلام, said, we have every reason to be grateful to our God who always keeps manifesting for us the signs of his power. I didn't complete the answer question, so yeah, I will give this over to Islamabad. The Promised Messiah والسلام, writes, we have, be, we have every reason to be grateful to our God, who always keeps manifesting for us the signs of his power, so that our faith may be continually A, revealed, B, recognized, C, refreshed, D, radiant. C, refreshed. C, refreshed. Let's see if that is the correct answer. And we have seen it is the correct answer. Well done for that. Okay, seekers ready? 4030 to Musrur region. The promised Messiah alayhi wasalam, states that if Trinity was a concept taught by Moses alayhi wasalam, the Jews would most definitely have known it. On the other hand, the Jews were enjoined to stick to the teaching of the unity of God to the extent that each and every Jew was commanded to memorize it, inscribe it onto their door of their house and to teach it to a... Okay, Atif there with the first buzz. Okay, you, can, you, can, you, cannot, you cannot confer? Teach it to... Uh, yeah, can anybody else No, Atif does have to answer. I think it's their children. Okay, it's A, his brothers, B, family, C, friends, D, their children. And you said D, their children. Well done, it's the correct answer. The Prophet ﷺ explained that the concept of Trinity was not there within the Jews. The Jews actually believed in Tawheed of God, in the oneness of God. And this concept of Trinity was actually brought back by Paul, who wanted to please the Romans, the Greeks at the time, who were idol worshippers themselves. Okay, seekers ready, the next question. The promised Messiah والسلام, explains how current Christianity is the made up religion of Paul who opposed the Torah. The promised Messiah والسلام, writes, he, Paul, set his followers against the Torah and taught them that there was no need for the law after the Messiah's A coming, B salvation, C atonement. Atif there again with the buzz. Atonement. Atonement, D was gospels and you said C atonement. Is the correct answer? Well done. Atif, for the viewers at home, can you explain what the Prophet Messiah is talking about here? The Prophet says that um, when Paul came, he started Christianity and he's changed um, the original teachings of Hazrat uh, Jesus, -Islam, the Messiah. Yes. And he preached that because of um, Jesus' supposed atonement, yeah. um, the Christians were pretty much free to do anything because, because of Jesus' um, sacrifice on the cross, as they say, they were free from sin pretty much. And that's Paul change the teachings as according to promises. Exactly. Thank you for that. It's 44, it's, it's 40 all as we are right now. Islamabad, if you get the next question right, you will win this round. Seekers ready, hands on the buzzers. Regarding Jesus -Islam, calling himself the Son of God, the promised Messiah -Islam, states, the truth is that those who have a relationship of personal love with God are often made to use some metaphoric expressions regarding themselves, which ignorant people use to prove their A, greatness. Okay, Divinity. Okay, B was prominent, C, divinity, and 
de humility, and you said C, divinity. divinity, sorry about that. That's the correct answer. Ghalib Sai, can you explain this question also for the viewers at home? Yeah, so um, people, so for instance, Hazrat Masimad gives his own example, and yes. there are, you know, verses in the Quran Sharif, for instance, uh, the Holy Prophet, when Allah says that it's not his hand who takes the covenant, but Allah's hand, right. it's just a, met, a, a signal, symbol of Allah's love for the person. That's all it is, but people misconstrue it after the demise of prophets. And then make them godlike. Godlike, okay. yeah. Sudden death on the multiple choice again, just like the first round. Whoever gets this question right will win the round. It's 45 40 to Masrur region. Seekers ready. The promised Messiah والسلام, explains that many times dreams and visions are metaphors. Accordingly, God said to the promised Messiah, والسلام, You are to me like an offspring, and your relationship to me is such that the world knows nothing of it. The mullahs became wild at this and asked if there could be any more doubt about the Promised Messiah Islam's being a kafir, God forbid. In answer to this, the Promised Messiah Islam said, they have completely forgotten the verse, Fadhkurullaha ka dhikrikum abaakum. Remember Allah as you remember your forefathers. This is from a Surah al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah, yeah, we will also need the verse. You can't whisper the answers to him, that's not fair. Okay, we're going we're gonna to give the answers and then um, if it's right or not, we'll decide and we'll give it over if it's incorrect. A, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 201. B, Surah Al-Raf, verse 25. C, Al Ahzab verse 4 or D Ar Rahman verse 30. Surah Al Baqarah is not the complete answer. We will give this over to the Surah region. It's A. Surah Al Baqarah verse 201. Let's see if that's the correct answer. It is the correct answer. You did need to listen to all the options and also answer the verse number. Okay, so well done to the Surah region. You've won the second round. Ghalib Saab, mashallah. I think you won the last round as well. Yeah, we won the first Marshall one too, yeah. So how's the overall experience for the finals being so far? It's much more nerve-wracking than the first few rounds. You know, the first few rounds you just think we're going to read the books, have a bit of fun, and then of suddenly course. it just builds up a bit. So. Of course. Yeah. But well done so far. Yeah. It's still very close. It's anyone's game today. Over to Islam, but Daniel Saab is the same question we've been asking throughout the finals. Your concept of Hazrat Masih Ma'ad alayhi salatu wasalam, how has it changed whilst you've been reading the various books? I mean, we've read The Need for the Imam, we've read The Heavenly Sign, we've read The Victory of Islam, Fountain of Christianity. I always knew of his eloquence and his humbleness, but having read the books, I've realised how eloquent he is in his writing and just how persuasively he puts his message across so that even the most fundamental Christian or Jew or Buddhist well, has to listen to his argument and has to say that this argument does have some merit, at least. Of course. Atasab, reading the books of Prophet Messiah, how has it helped you to get a better understanding of the Prophet Messiah himself? Yeah, I think uh, the most important thing I've realized is that when Prophet Messiah mentioned that the one who does not read my books at least three times, there's an element of the kabur in it. How truthful was he? Because the first time you read it, you think that, okay, you've gone through it, you've got the ideas. But the second time you read it, you realize that the first time there were many, many points that you missed it out. Of course. And of course, the, you do it third time, then you will still get some more points. So yes. there's endless thing. No matter how many times you read it, still there's some element there's, of new there's and a, fresh. There's a new verity that opens every time when we read the books in the Prophet's side. Zakhla. Okay, Masrur region, which book are you going to go for for the deeper thinking? Uh, Victory of Islam. Okay, Victory of Islam it is. So by default, Islamabad, you get the need for the Imam. And who, who will go first? You'd like to go first? Thank you. Okay. Your first question. The Prophet Messiah mentions that God Almighty gave him the glad tidings that God will grant him a new life after death, just as the resurrection of Jesus. The wording of the revelation in Urdu is apni chamkar diklaunga aur apni kudrat numai se tujhe uthaunga. What is the English translation of this verse? What does the resurrection of Jesus indicate to? And what else does the new life refer to? Okay, you um, have 15 seconds to refer. So could you, okay, the wrong question's on the screen. 
Um, should we just go? Yeah, if you Sorry, want. could you repeat the question? I forgot the question now. Yes, what is the English translation of this revelation? What does the resurrection of Jesus indicate to? And what else does a new life refer to? So the resurrection is um, Hazrat Isa being just spiritually raised towards Allah and his station being close to Allah. Um, you, you think about the translation. Um, his new life means to the fact that his, um, his, his creed will okay, be we'll established. Need an okay, so the resurrection of Jesus والسلام, indicates towards his closeness to Allah and the fact that spiritual people um, are raised to Allah during their lifetime in the sense that they are raised and then descend to heaven to disseminate their message but also in the sense that spiritual people after their death are taken towards Allah not before their death so it's a spiritual rafa, not a physical rafa. Um, what does his new life refer to? It refers to the resurrection of his creed after his death like the, the people of Jesus were down for 300 years and then suddenly rose to such prominence similarly as a Masim says after my death my people will um, gain to new um, president, uh, new prominence. Main apni chamkar dikhlaunga, aur apni kudrat namai se tujhe uthaunga. Um, okay, so that's. I will show a manifestation of my power by raising you. I will make my power manifest by raising you. To okay, myself. we will. We will, we will okay, sorry. Can you say the translation again? Oh, I've forgotten what I said now. Um, <laughs> you manifest his power. I, yeah, so um we take note of the end. or apni kudrat numai se tujhe uthaunga. So um I know the end of it is by raising you. Um the beginning part is me I apni power <laughs> do I do I get marks for split word? No, <laughs> okay. the overall translation has okay. been given in the book. In the book. Okay, so um I will manifest my power by raising you to myself. Okay, you'll get 10 marks because the translation isn't exactly how it was in the book. I will reveal my splendor and show my power by raising you. Okay. So that's 10 marks for you. Okay, seekers from Islamabad, your first question for the deeper thinking. The Promised Messiah والسلام, has quoted the following part of a Quranic verse which refers to the Jewish rabbis at the time of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and it's وَكَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ يَسْتَفْتِحُونَ what surah of the Holy Quran is this from? What does it mean? And what was the fate of the Jewish rabbis? Okay, help me when I win. So the first question is, which chapter is this from? Yeah? Yes. It's from Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay. The second question is, what does it mean? Yes. It means that uh, they used to invoke divine blessings for helping the divine faith. And uh, they were also the recipients of revelations. Okay. And the fate of Jewish rabbis was that they... Uh, Basically, they did not, uh, in majority, they did not accept the, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, they were just perished because they did not accept the Imam of the age and uh, they were just annihilated, except only a few of them who, who, who by their... Uh, Is the complete answer. You will be awarded 15 marks for that. Okay, coming over to Masul region. Raza, how are you feeling? Still a bit nervous. <laughs> Still a bit nervous. The nerves haven't gone away so far. I think Ghalib's nerves are finished now. Yeah, they never go away. Oh, they never go. Okay. Okay, anyway, your question is as follows. What allegation has Muhammad Ismail raised against the Prophet Messiah with regards to Sayyid Ahmed Arab? How has the Prophet Messiah refuted his allegation? And you must include the Quranic verse in Arabic, um, which the Prophet Messiah has pr um, presented while answering Muhammad Ismail's allegation. So the allegation made was that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so he, th this certain person, they say they were the Arab Sahib, apparently spent two months with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in close company. Yes. And he said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to use astro astrological devices. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, um, the translation of the, the verse was, O oh, son... Uh, I can remember the Arabic. That's the Arabic. Yeah, yeah. You do the Arabic then. Okay. Ta'alu um, nad'u. Abnana wa abnakum, wa nisa'ana wa nisa'akum, wa anfusana wa anfusakum. Thumma nabtahil, fa naj'al la'natullahi ala al-kazibin. MashaAllah. Okay. Um, uh, and then he says that um, this is actually, and the reason he says that is because that refers to that the, the, yeah, he's, he's actually reciting a falsehood. And the onus of the uh, proof is on um, Malvi Saab to produce this person in his, in his presence to say, um, you know, whether you've, uh, whether he actually did stay, and in fact, what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam additionally said that, in fact, don't have to find this Arab Sahib. You stay with me for two months, and you can observe me at close quarters instead. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's a 
We don't need a translation, do we? No, it's fine. Okay, that is all 15 marks. Well done for that. Okay, seekers from Islamabad, Atif, how are you feeling so far? It's 60, 55, se sorry, it's 70, it's 75, 55. I think you can still bring it back. Uh, yes, I think my nerves are slowly getting better, although I um, uh, hope we can uh, pick it up and uh, catch the other team. Okay, well, your second question in the deeper round is as follows. Explaining a faculty of the Imam of the age, the Promised Messiah has written a Persian cu couplet. Its, trans its translation starts with, He is like the whole, and you are just a part, not the whole. Under which faculty of an Imam has the Promised Messiah written this? Explain that faculty, and what's the second half of the couplet? Its translation. Okay, the second half is, uh, You will better if you break away from him. So I'm okay. just answering the last part first, yeah? Okay. okay. Last part first. Uh, so the next question is? Under which faculty of an imam has a principal I mentioned this? Explain that faculty. Okay, we need an answer. I think it's the, the, uh, the fifth one. Um, relationship with God. Okay, it's actually the immensity of knowledge and obviously the, yeah. um, that's in great. So five marks for your um, getting the Persian couplet, right? I think you got the harder part right yeah. and the easier part you didn't get so... Okay, so coming over to the third and final question from seekers from um, Masrul region. Your question is as follows. The Promised Messiah Islam, was falsely accused of offering his prayers at the, very, at the very limit of the designated time and of being irregular in observing prayers in congregation whilst residing in the city of Aligarh. This was an allegation by Muhammad Ismail. According to the Promised Messiah, what is the significance of being a traveller in Islam? Why did the Promised Messiah offer certain prayers at the limit of the designated time? And whilst in Aligarh, why did the Promised Messiah let's have Islam, not re regularly offer congregational prayers in the mosque? State two reasons. Okay. So the first one is just because a traveller is giving certain concessions, so he can combine. So he says, sometimes I combine my Zohar and Asa prayer. Ten seconds on the clock. Okay. So should we, we just start off answering yeah, then? Yeah, of course. Um, the significance of being a traveller is that the traveller is given certain, um, certain ease. You know, Islam is a religion of ease, so he's given certain... There's a word I'm looking for. Concessions. Uh, concessions that's okay. it. Um, for the, which mean that he's allowed to offer his prayers at the, at the, lim the limits of the times or combine certain prayers. So Hazrat Masimah says sometimes he would combine Zohar and Asim prayer at the limit of the time. Which is also a sunnah of the Holy Prophet. Also. Yes. Um, and is allowed in the Sharia. Um, why did the Promised Messiah offer it? Why? Oh, because he was a traveller and therefore he was allowed by the... By the the Sharia okay, in Ali Ghar on this has actually explained. Wait, oh, sorry, go on, in detail. Yeah, yeah, carry on. So basically, what he, the Prophet Salam says, he actually, um, although he was given to concessions, he still actually uh, used to attend congregational prayers. Um, he uh, said at one point he also attended a Friday prayer behind Mulvi Ismail Sahib, uh, which he now questions the validity of because of the allegation raised against him. Um, he did not regularly offer the prayers because he says that um, the imams of the age of this time now. Um, they have basically become such that performing this task has become uh, almost like a profession. And if somebody else sort of stands in, instead of them, um, they get quite agitated and they get quite annoyed by this and they, can al uh, they almost resort to, resort to litigation and things like that. And he says that the, if the quality of the imams is, are such, he doesn't agree with sort of following them. Yeah, so that's the second, the second reason is because he d he's not sure of the quality of their faith, just like he, he's questioning the validity of his Friday prayer now. Um, so you wanted more information on the second, on the second part? One, yeah. um, why did the Promised Messiah offer certain prayers at the limit of the time? Um, he says, even certain people, even though they're not traveling, certain scholars, even though they're not on a journey, and whilst they're in their home, and they're not um, obscured by inclement weather, they still offer their prayers at the limit of the time because certain concessions are granted to them. And so they, they make the most of them. And he's not sure when this was abrogated. OK, so you will receive 10 marks for this. The mark you didn't receive, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that he was obliged to follow the injunctions implemented by Sharia, that he was obliged. And 
the practice of the Holy Prophet due to his love of the Holy Prophet the Prophet Messiah used to follow him in every respect. Ten marks for you. Okay, Islamabad, your final need for the Imam, deeper thinking question. The promised Messiah والسلام, has stated the nine signs that accompany true revelation. Explain the fourth, the seventh and the ninth. The fourth one is the Prophet Messiah says that the true revelation is uh, uh, supported by divine signs. Uh, and so they contain some prophecies that, that, that are fulfilled. Okay, at that's point. correct. The seventh sign? The seventh one is the, the recipient of divine revelation is never recovered. And uh, he is never afraid to take on the uh, proponents, uh, claimants of other uh, divine revelation because he knows that God, God is with him and uh, he will help him. And the ninth one is Okay, we will answer. Maybe Atif and Daniel can chip in here. <laughs> They are open the knowledge of divine verities and spiritual knowledge through through divine revelations. Okay, you receive. You got the last one. Well done for that. You didn't get the se the seventh one, which is actually true revelation does not end with a single revelation, but it's continuity. Um, he speaks to whomever he blesses with his attention, and he answers his question continuously. So you receive ten marks for that, and that concludes our finals of seekers of treasure. Mashallah. Seekers from Masrur region did take it away. It's been a very, very tough competition indeed. I will go first to Islamabad. Islamabad, very unlucky. Your final thoughts. Atasab, your team's performed very well getting into the finals. I don't think we are unlucky. I think they are the worthy, worthy winners. They did extremely well. Exactly, Much but we must, we must also remember that you are also the winners as well. Yeah. That was my second point, that I don't think that what we have gained in terms of the knowledge from the Promised Messiah, Sato Islam books, Saying that we are the losers doesn't make sense at all. So exactly. It, it is a win-win situation, a win -win but obviously, situation. compliments to Masroor team. MashaAllah, well done. And Masroor region, well done to you. <laughs> Ghalib Saab, how's it? Yeah. Well, your team's performed very well over the whole oh, course. Alhamdulillah. Final um, thoughts? Very, very unexpected, actually. Um, we didn't think we'd win the semi-final. <laughs> As you can, yeah, our, our, no, no, none of our friends or anybody thought we'd win that. And now the <laughs> final, this is unbelievable. Um, but no, thank you very much for your kind words. But he's correct. Like, you know, the, the aim is hopefully people see that ordinary people can read the books of the Promised Messiah. And then hopefully they'll be inspired to read them too. So the four or five books that we've covered, though they might have gained a lot of knowledge through the questions, it's not the same as picking it up and reading it yourself. Exactly, so yeah. For the viewers at home as well, we do have our winners, Masur region, the seekers from Masur region, but in actual fact, everyone has won. All the teams who have participated, they've won in their own sense. People have gained, and we saw it through the various matches as well. They've gained new knowledge and understanding of the Prophet Messiah's writings. The beauties of Islam have opened up to them. And very much a time, people even said their connection with God Almighty has increased. Masul region, your prize will be given at the National Ishtama, inshallah. And with that, Jazakallah, thank you for watching. And Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.